Hey everyone, we're getting back to the Maslow. I'm pretty excited about this because I just got my machine working in the present day uh, and it's working pretty well. So we're going to go back in time and kind of document all of the upgrades to get my machine to where it is today. And I'm going to put these all in a series together. Uh, my wife and I have kind of always referred to this upgrade period as me working towards the Super Maslow. So that's going to be the name of this series. This video is actually from back about last fall uh, when I started to tear down the frame. And this really all got started because I was starting to have some reliability issues with my stock Z-axis. So I decided it was about time to switch over to my meticulous Z-axis. And in the process, I also wanted to add in a 12 foot adjustable top beam. So I'm starting off here by taking the motors off of the frame and really to do that first I have to pull the chains off so I'm just winding them up real carefully to put them all in a box together uh, and then I'm gonna go and just remove the entire motor assembly off the machine and then I'll disassemble that a little bit later so when I talk of the 12 foot top beam um, what this really is going to enable me to do is to utilize more of the bed of the machine if you look at the spoil board as it stands right now, you can see that pretty much all my cuts fall into the same area. It's about a three foot tall, by four foot wide section of that spoil board. Um, and within that, I'm accurate to about a sixteenth of an inch. But outside of that, um, my accuracy drops off very quickly. And really this is because the uh, original top beam for the machine is only 112 inches long. So, you know, just under 10 feet. But just by widening it, I should be able to go from the four foot wide area to a six foot and maybe even an eight foot is what I'm hoping for of usable area on the machine. And that's going to be really great because that's going to give me the ability to cut a full sheet width of uh, a part. And that'll be nice because I have some taller cabinets that I want to be making in the future. So now we're getting into tearing down my old motor brackets and these were overly complicated and had a lot of degrees of movement. So I, I'm actually just going to be doing away with everything here. It's a little bit of a pity because like those chain guides you see there are a uh, quarter inch HDPE plastic that I actually designed specifically for this application. And those actually worked pretty well. Um, but as you can see now that I'm getting down to some of the bracketry in the motor, uh, there's a lot of room for adjustment, which at the time I thought is really what I needed. But what it means is that there's actually more slop in the system. So I would get a bad chain snag and it would actually uh, force these brackets to shift. And that was just not a good time. Because uh, then I'd have to stop, recalibrate everything, like my motor spacing changed there. So it made it way more tedious. Uh, and there you can pretty much see most of the bracketry. Uh, there are two pieces of angle iron plus the stock motor mount bracket. Um, and I've cut slots in pretty much everything just so I could adjust them. And here's a quick preview of my uh, the, the new parts. I know that it's hard to see with the time lapse, but we'll be getting into that in just a minute. Um, now I'm going to just take apart the other motor the same way. And really what I'm looking for are just those motors. Everything else is pretty much scrap metal to me. One of the really nice things about the new design is that it just uh, is a lot easier to work on than this. You can see how finicky it is just trying to get all these screws loose, working my wrench in there and everything. Um, and I, I feel like the new design is just going to be way easier to work with and way easier to install. So I made a fun discovery while setting these down in the hardware pile. Apparently, these are permanent magnet motors. I didn't even realize, oops, I didn't even realize that. I guess it doesn't like to stick there. No, it does. Super cool. All right, so I skipped the actual drilling process just because I wanted to get this done. But uh, <clears throat> I set up my rolling stands to support the tube way the hell out there. And I set up my tiny little drill press. I, I kind of wish I had a bigger one, but whatever. 
um, and leveled out the rolling stands there. <clears throat> and then for this, I actually just used a step drill because it made really short work of doing these holes where these ones are clearance for quarter 20. So I think it was uh, 7 30 seconds. I could be wrong though. I really hate 30 seconds. And then all of these along the tube are clearance for 3 8 16, which I made them super sloppy. I don't know if we can really read. No, you can't really read the numbers too well. But I did two sizes up from 3 eighths, so that would be 7 sixteenths on all those clearance for 3 eighths, just because I wanted them to be a little extra sloppy. I mean, the inner strut should take up a lot of it, but we'll see. So after drilling all the holes in the new top beam, the next thing we're going to get right into is uh, test fitting up my new motor mount brackets on the beam and making sure that everything fits before I paint it. So you can see the front plate here. Um, this is just a piece of mild steel and I think it's something like eighth inch thick. And I just made a flat pattern there. Uh, and then on the other side I have a same bracket and a small little spacer that you can kind of see me fiddling with in between. Uh, and the idea is that I want to sandwich the motor between these two brackets so that there's absolutely no play when it comes to the motor mount to the top beam. I want these to be rigid as possible because I want to avoid the problems I ran into last time with all the adjustability I had in it. Um, the little spacer I was talking about is also a little piece of water jet cut, uh, mild steel. Uh, I milled to be the thickness, the thickness is the difference between the motor uh, gearbox and the one, in, one and a half inch box tube that makes up the top beam. And the last little piece you see over there is the idler sprocket. Uh, that's going to guide the chain right into the drive sprocket. All right, we have a top beam with both motors mounted to it. So now the fun part begins, figuring out how to run the chain along the new top beam. This is the one part I haven't really planned all that well. So we're going to see how well this goes. Okay, so this is what I've come up with. I actually ended up moving the sprocket from this, this bolt here to this inside one most to get more of an exaggeration around here. Because when this is operating, the chain will kind of angle down like this. Or possibly even more like this, probably. Which is going to give me a great amount of engagement around the sprocket, which is going to allow the motor to do more work. Eventually I'm going to try larger sprockets as an effort to make this machine move faster to increase the feed rate of the machine. But for the meantime, this is probably good. And See, this thing's like a slinky. If it pops off, and it slides around on the horses. All right, but basically, so what I have for tensioning right now is that I took the original stock bungee and I have it run between the two chains. Uh, it's tensioning up pretty well. The only thing is that I gotta figure an actual method of securing the ends of the chains because right now I literally just have an aluminum pop rivet drilled into an eighth inch hole that I just threw in there. So I'm thinking maybe a bolt or something to give me a more permanent, yeah, see, I just knocked that loose and they're now dangling in the breeze. And this will be kind of like what the machine's like in the flesh because that's what it's gonna sit like yeah, and see, I don't like that dangling like this. Ooh. And that just popped off the popper bit. All right, I got more work to do. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this. In our next installment, we're going to be going over getting this top beam mounted onto the frame. So I'll see you guys all next time.